Hi, I'm June Park. I'm an engineer working on our commercial offerings for Backstage, and I'm here to talk to you about our role-based access control plugin. As we know, Backstage unlocks a world of possibilities for your organization by empowering everyone to easily find the information that they need. But sometimes, you may not want everyone to be able to access everything. Many companies may have sensitive information stored within their systems that should not be accessible to everyone. Sometimes, it makes a lot of sense to restrict certain destructive actions to a subset of users. Or maybe your organization thrives on strong team ownership, and you want to codify that philosophy in your backstage user interface. One of the things we try to do often is gather feedback from the community, particularly adopters who are further along on their journey on what enterprise-level features would have enabled a smoother backstage implementation. While our open source community brings so many different perspectives and organizational challenges, again and again, authorization emerged as a common need frequently requested by adopters, even an outright blocker to adoption. Earlier this year, we released the open source permission framework that allows for adopters to build many different authorization mechanisms into backstage. Implementations like attribute-based access control, bespoke logic expressed in code, or integration with external authorization providers. Since then, it's been great to see so many developers being able to address their access control needs through this framework. But we also heard from adopters that they wanted an out-of-the-box solution that made configuration powerful yet understandable, something that allowed them to manage access and protect their data and backstage flexibly and easily. To be clear, the Backstage Permission Framework is, is and forever will be open source, allowing Backstage maintainers to write whatever code they need to implement access control in a way that works best for their organization. Leveraging this open-ended nature of the Permission Framework, we at Spotify have built a role-based access control plugin that integrates seamlessly with your existing identity providers and allows administrators at your organization to configure authorization through a no-code management UI to plugins, routes, and data within your developer portal. We built this RBAC plugin to be super intuitive. Within the interface, admins can quickly define roles, assign users and groups, and configure permissions to encode authorization decisions according to your organization's evolving security and compliance needs. We think this user-friendly RBAC plugin will make access control a breeze to implement. Let's take a look at how it works. At the heart of our RBAC plugin is the concept of a policy. Each policy defines who has access to which entities and actions. As you make changes to each policy and publish those changes, the previous versions are saved automatically for historical access and can be republished at any time. As you can see, each policy consists of one or more roles. In this case, we only have one role in our active policy, which is denying users access. This is why we're not able to see anything in our catalog. Let's change this policy to be a bit more useful. In order to make changes, we start by duplicating the active policy. This creates a draft policy, which is not yet published. This is where we'll go and make our changes. In our draft policy, we'll start simple. We'll call this policy allow all. Let's remove this role and create a new role called allow all that will allow everyone access to everything. We'll do this by matching all permissions and responding with allow. This will emulate the default behavior of Backstage when you have not turned on the permission framework at all. Now let's save our draft and publish our changes. As soon as I publish these changes, the new policy is now live in our Backstage instance. Now, when we navigate back to the catalog, you can see that all our components are visible. Great, but that was an extremely simplified policy. Let's try something a little bit more realistic. Let's create a new policy. This time, we're going to create a new role that can only access users and group entities perhaps something appropriate for an HR role. Instead of matching all permissions, we are now going to target the catalog entity read permission. Then we're going to author what we call a conditional decision. Conditional decisions allow us to make an authorization decision based on a set of criteria. 
The UI allows you to craft conditions of arbitrary complexity through options such as any of, all of, and negations. But we'll author a single condition this time to keep things simple. Within these conditions, we are free to utilize any of the permission rules provided to us by Backstage plugins. In our case, since we've selected the catalog entity read permission, the UI shows us all of the catalog rules at our disposal. We want to use the is entity kind rule. We'll specify the parameter to be user and group. We'll also make this role apply to the people team. Before we save and publish, let's move this new role up so it takes precedence over our previous role. Great. Now, if we go back to the catalog, you can see that I'm only able to view users and groups. You may have noticed that there is one problem with this policy. If I were to go and create a component that is not a user or group, then I could no longer see it, even though I am the owner of that component. That doesn't seem right. Let's fix that. We'll make a new version and edit the permission that we just created. This time, we won't use a single condition. We'll use an any of to, in order to combine two conditions. We'll have the is entity kind rule just like before. But this time, we'll also add the is entity owner rule. The parameter for this rule is a special string that allows us to specify the user that is making the request for this entity. This also may be a good time to mention that if you're already using the permission framework with custom rules, you can use them right here just like this. Let's save and publish our policy once again. You can now see that I not only have access to users and groups, but I also have access to the components that I own. At any point, if you want to go back and publish a previous version, you can do so simply by using the previous version's table. For example, if we wanted to make the allow all policy our active policy again, all we have to do is hit publish. Or if we want to create a new draft based on any of the older versions, we can do that as well. This is just a small taste of the RBAC plugin. You can start to imagine how this UI could be used to easily craft policies that work for your organization, even if your use case may be complex. We believe RBAC can address those pressing enterprise needs for better security and compliance within Backstage. RBAC ships with a handful of other features that we haven't shown here today, such as automatic detection of stale client policies, import export, and configurable default policies. We also have plans for even more features to be released down the road, such as improvements to the conditional decision UI and policy testing. So stay tuned for those.